You are listening to Insights, produced by the University of New South Wales Law Society, a podcast dedicated to bring you an insight into law school, the legal profession, and legal issues. The production team would also like to show our respects and acknowledge the Bedigal people, who are the traditional custodians of the land, of elders past and present on which this podcast is made. This episode is sponsored by Ashurst, a global law firm with a reputation for high performance, a wealth of industry experience, and a refreshingly open and diverse culture. With offices across Australia, Ashurst has achieved Band 1 Chambers recognition in banking and finance practice areas, including acquisition finance, corporate finance, and property finance. Amongst its many achievements, Ashurst was named the most innovative firm of the year at the 2020 British Legal Technology Awards and the winner and finalist of the Top 100 Most Popular Clerkship Employer Award in 2020 and 2021, respectively. Asher seeks to make the positive social impact through a standalone pro bono practice, working closely with community-based legal and charitable organisations, helping them deliver key community projects and volunteer services. Asher also offers a seasonal clerkship experience, which gives great insight into the culture and experience at the firm. Clerks will participate in a wide variety of work through rotations, skill sessions, and practice area specific self paced and firm learning. These include, but are not limited to, drafting legal expertise updates, case law research, and drafting advice to clients. They will also have the opportunity to get involved in inter firm events, client and firm functions, as well as employee networks including disability and resilience, gender, multiculturalism, and LGBTI. Upon completing the clerkship, clerks will be considered for the Ashurst Graduate Program. For this episode of the podcast, we have invited Nikki Thea Vitkin, a senior associate in Ashurst Financial Services Regulatory Group in Sydney. Nikki advises principally in the areas of financial services regulation, with an emphasis on regulated institutions and market participants on licensing and compliance with market operating rules and market integrity rules and Corporations Act conduct and disclosure requirements. She also advises clients on ASIC regulatory enforcement actions through the market disciplinary panel and negotiating enforceable undertakings and license conditions. A huge welcome and thank you for Nikki for joining us today. Thanks for having me. All right, so lovely to meet you. Let's begin with a little bit of your background. So you're a UNSW alumna and after completing a clerkship at Ashurst, you went on to become a lawyer and a senior associate. Um, So you've been with Ashurst for over a decade now. Yes, that's right. I suppose my long service leap is coming up if you put it that way. But yes, it's been um, my whole career, really. Yeah, so let's do a little bit of rewind um, back to the beginning. What made you choose to study law at UNSW? I would like to say that obviously it's a really great law school and that was the basis for my decision, but it actually wasn't. Um, more of a personal reason so I have an older brother who is seven years older than me and um, he went off to university at UNSW and obviously at the time I was kind of an impressionable 10 year old and I thought that was just the coolest thing ever it must be the best place in the world Um, so I just always thought that it was a really cool place to go to Um, I went there for his uh, you know graduation ceremony and I was just completely blown away by the campus. Um, So probably not the most well-informed decision, but obviously um, it's a a really great school. So I'm glad that um, I made the choice to go there. Yeah, definitely. Um, I remember as a little kid hearing about my mum doing a master's degree, I thought, well, I have to at least do a master's, right? (laughs) But I'm still, um, I'm I'm just like working through a bachelor's first. Um, And so you also did Bachelor of Arts um, with your law degree, majoring in international relations. I feel like that's slightly unusual because uh, people normally think of a commerce degree when they when they hear finance and market regulation. So did you imagine back then that you would be practicing in this area? Definitely not. And I think a lot of um, people who do a degree in international relations kind of fancy themselves as being, you know, the future diplomats of the world and going to the United Nations and going to international trade conferences. So, you know, um, coming out of high school, that's what I had in my head as something that, you know, I wanted to do. So um, I chose, obviously, a combined um, 
law and arts degree for that. Um, but actually, it turns out that I'm not actually the most politically inclined person. So um, that actually didn't ev eventuate to to anything. But I mean, the 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 reason why I got into financial services regulations in the first place was really an opportunity came up in my fourth year of uni to do a paralegal um, gig at the ASX. So the job advertisement came up and I thought, oh, that sounds interesting, but surely they're not going to go for a, um, an art student over, you know, all the other commons, commerce students out there. Um, so, but, you know, I decided to apply and go for it anyway um, and ended up working in the ASX disciplinary tribunal area, which, um, you know, was such a great experience and really a stepping stone to me practicing as a financial services regulatory lawyer at Ashurst because how it transpired was essentially, um, you know, going through the clerkship application process, they saw that my experience at the tribunal at ASX aligned with, um, you know, the practice um, that we have here at Ashurst in terms of um, financial services regulations and working a lot in that segment. So um, they partnered me up with, uh, with Jonathan Gordon, who's the partner that I work for now, and he was my interviewing partner for the clerkship. And I've been essentially working with him ever since. So um, you never really know where your career will go and, you know, one door opens and there's a whole load of opportunity that, um, that, that opens up itself. Yeah, definitely. Um, so in, in terms of your art screen now, how much would you say that has transferred into, into your work today? I mean, it's, it's a very versatile and useful degree in that obviously it teaches you a lot of skills in terms of research and drafting and being able to process a lot of information that's presented in written words. So I suppose, you know, to a, to, to a certain extent, that degree is still um, hugely useful. But I think even if you, um, you know, did a commerce degree, that's not going to necessarily give you an edge or an advantage in a practice like, you know, um, financial services regulations or really um, the finance uh, practice groups generally. Um, a lot of what we do, you learn on the job. Um, certainly university teaches you the um, basic skills and general kind of um, basic framework of things, but otherwise a lot of the stuff that you do, you end up learning on the job. Yeah, so would you say as a piece of advice to those people who may be um, a little unsure about applying for a job that they think their credentials may not be suited for, like just to go for it? Just go for it, definitely. You don't have anything to lose. Sure, you end up putting in a bit of effort in terms of, you know, doing the application and, um, and going to interviews if you progress to that stage, but really there's no there's no harm and you shouldn't close yourself off to those opportunities just because you have self-doubt or you don't think that you're well qualified, just go for it. Yeah. Um, and so what's a day working in the financial services regulatory group like? It's actually very um, varied and diverse, which is really the best thing about our practice group is that we do a very broad spectrum of um, work from supporting um, you know the corporate team in terms of transactions in the financial services sector so for example you know in the morning you could be um, contributing to a due diligence report for a potential IPO of a financial services provider um, by mid-morning you could be advising on a licensing application in terms of a particular provider wanting to obtain an Australian financial services license um, by mid-afternoon, you could be, you know, drafting submissions um, to go to the uh, market disciplinary panel because there's a particular enforcement matters on foot for one of our clients. Um, and, you know, by late afternoon, you could be on the phone to London about a client who's looking to do business in Australia and asking us, us you know, for uh, advice around what issues they need to, to think about. So it's really a very broad spectrum of work, which certainly keeps life very interesting and keeps you on your toes. <laughs> right, that sounds so interesting. Um, it's also really interesting to see how people with different backgrounds can end up in the same specialization, um, because it really shows how unique perspectives bring out a melting pot of knowledge. So on that note, what is your go-to activity when you have a break? Um, 
I actually am a sucker for bad reality television. So, you know, Married at First Sight, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Kardashians, give them to me. <laughs> that's, that's essentially how I unwind. I just kind of um, binge Netflix a little bit. Um, and, but I do, I do read a lot too as, um, as a hobby and that's something that my family never really understands because they're like, oh, you, you read for work all day and then you come home and you want to read some more? Like, what's with that? But, you know, it's just, it takes you into another world. So um, I really enjoy reading as well. I, I think it's probably because the things that you read for fun are so different to what you read at work. So there's still that sense of enjoyment there. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about your journey with Ashurst. You've been with Ashurst since completing a summer clerkship. So could you share a bit about why you chose Ashurst and why it stood out to you? Yeah, I mean, it just felt right. It just felt like the right fit for me. Um, and I'm not sure, you know, with COVID and everything, how the clerkship process will go now. But I suppose when I did it, you know, you have... The, um, the information night, you have the cocktail nights, you have buddies who you get paired up with to take you out for coffees. And at every step of the way throughout the whole process, I just felt very supported and I just felt like it was, it just felt right. Um, and you don't necessarily get that with every firm that you interview at or, at or that you go to or the other people that you talk to at other firms. So it just everything just gelled together and I think that you know that really is the most important thing when you are looking for a prospective place to start your career is that if you feel supported and you feel like everything is coming together in a way that you know is consistent with who you are and your personality um you know then then that's probably the um really just trust your gut um, and that, that's what my gut was, was telling me. And obviously, um, you know, aside from the culture and the people, um, obviously it's a very high calibre firm doing a lot of really um, great work at the forefront of everything that, um, that the firm does. So that's obviously a real contributing factor as well in terms of, um, you know, making sure that you are given the opportunities to work on those matters that are just really cool to work on um so yeah it's it, it just it just all um came together I suppose um my style is really really kind of uh casual so just by way of comparison in terms of what I'm talking about when I say you get a sense of what a firm is through this whole kind of clerkship process um I went through an interview with another firm who shall remain nameless um and I thought I was gelling with the people really well and it all was going great um but then um I didn't progress through and the feedback that came back was oh you were too casual in your style so you know it, different firms will have different focus and different vibe so um yeah, it just, I suppose, depend, depends who you gel with. Yeah, and also who lets you be yourself. Mm, exactly right. Um, and so if you were to describe Asha's culture with one word? I would say it's very supportive. Um, so actually, I should mention I'm a mum with two young kids. Um, so I work on a part-time basis. I work three and a half days um, a week. and. I would say that I've never felt more supported in my career um, as I am right now in terms of being able to work flexibly, um, but also being able to continue to progress in my career and working on the really good matters um, and challenging work that will allow me to continue to, um, to develop. So, right now I feel like I'm in a place where I've struck that right balance and it's really through the support of the firm that I've been able to to do that. Um, there's a real kind of collegiate um, environment within the firm and you know our kind of value right now the, the value of the firm is um, together we can be extraordinary and that's really um, a true reflection I think of the purpose of the firm in that you do work together as a team um, and you do that to strive to become extraordinary and exceptional and excellent in all the things that you do. So I think that's really, um, that's really uh, you know, a, key, a key value of the firm. 
Okay, um, so what is something you think law students should know when applying for clerkships at Ashurst? Um, I think we've obviously touched a little already on the fact that you should just be your authentic self, um, really to show the firm who you are. Um, you know, I'm not one to advocate for padding out your CV with various extracurricular activities, um, but at the same time, that doesn't hurt and it's always good to put your best foot forward and try and find even little things to perhaps distinguish yourself from the hundreds of applications that the firm will get. So remain true to yourself and be your authentic self, but at the same time, try and find points of distinction to basically you know, stand yourself out from the, from the pack because um, you know, as we know, law, f law school is full of high achievers. Um, so really it comes down to who you are as a person, how you can present yourself in the best light possible. Um, and and that's, really, that's really all you can do. Okay, um, and I'm sure our listeners are curious about this. What was the experience like from clerkships to becoming a senior associate? It has been relatively straightforward. I feel like in this firm, if you put in the hard work and you know you do the best that you can, then career progression is almost like a given. People will always support you at going to the next stage of your career if you're performing well. Um, so there's never going to be any kind of barrier from that point in terms of um, you know going to that next step. So it's been a relatively smooth career from clerkship where obviously you um, are nurtured and you are mentored and you are um, there's a bit of hand holding in terms of you know obviously at that initial stages which is really what you want as a junior lawyer because you really don't know very much um, so it's certainly um, you know a definitely a, a good learning experience with a lot of support around that um, obviously then going to lawyer where you have a little bit more autonomy, you kind of know what you're doing now, but obviously there's still a fair bit of oversight um, in terms of the work that you do. And then becoming a senior associate where you do take a lot more responsibility around client engagement and running with the matters um, relatively independently. So, um, so there's definitely kind of uh, growth and development at each stage and it's been, it's been great. You went to London for a few months in 2015 on a secondment to Ashurst London office. So what were the main differences with working there and working in Sydney? The weather, <laughs> actually, because I got sent there literally in the, in the middle of their winter. So I was there from January to, um, to March. So it was, that was the biggest point of difference. But um, no, actually, it wasn't too different, if you would believe it. Um, you know, the, the, the culture of the firm is quite similar across the different offices. So actually we had that, at that point had just merged with Asher. So we were previously Blake Dawson and we merged with the UK firm Ashurst and took on their name. Um, and really at the point of that merger, um, the, key, the key kind of driver for that was because of the alignment in our core values and our culture and our clients. Um, and that really kind of reflected when I went over to London because I was like, oh, this actually feels pretty familiar. And especially in financial services regulations, even though the laws are obviously different, the kind of broad principles that underpin kind of how financial services and uh, providers should be regulated and the kind of the broad brush principles are, are fairly similar. So you're kind of still talking the same language, well, English, but you're still talking the same language in terms of, you know, what we talk about in terms of the legal requirements and things like that. The specifics are different, but um, it was actually, it, at the end of the day, it was, it was actually not that different at all. Yeah, so I, th I think it's also because um, we borrow a lot from the British legal system, yeah. but probably also the ethics of um, financial services that, um, generally seems to, to be, there, there are some parts that are fairly consistent uh, across the world. Mm -hmm. So that's probably why there was a lot of similarity there. Exactly. Um, and one memorable moment from that experience. So one memorable place from London or just an experience um, during that time? 
actually it, it was living by myself for the first time because um, at that point I was still at home and then I got sent off to this succumbent to London and I was like well this is actually the very first time I'm going to be living by myself um, so that was I, I just think the whole experience in itself was really really memorable um, I made a whole bunch of um, friends in in the in the London office who I still keep in touch with um, and at the time actually there were a whole bunch of my friends from uni that had moved um, you know their careers to to London so there were a whole bunch of us um, there at the same time so we we're all catching up for dinners and um, you know traveling around so the whole experience was just really really memorable um, and Actually, the, the place that the firm had put me up for three months, um, it was an apartment near um, Tower Hill Station um, in London. And that's where they start the Jack Ripper tours. <laughs> um, so literally, I went on the tour the very first week that I got there and they showed us all the kind of creepy alleyways around, you know, the, the, the apartment. And I was like, oh, I'm, am I living in a little bit of a dodgy area here? <laughs> um, but... Uh, yeah, that was, that was fun too. Oh, okay, awesome. Um, what do you think is the most challenging aspect of your job? It's really the diverse nature of the work that I touched on before in terms of, you know, you could be advising on a transaction or an enforcement action or on licensing matters. So it's, you know, and that's all in a single day. So it's really kind of switching gears between those various matters, um, being on top of all of those various issues, um, and especially in financial services regulations, there's new laws and developments that come out all the time, especially as a result of the Royal Commission a couple of years ago. So it's a really fast paced area where there are a lot of regulatory change. So, you know, trying to keep up to date with all of that and making sure that we're still providing, you know, clear and concise and up-to-date advice to our clients. Um, that's always um, a challenge. It definitely keeps you on your toes all the time. You can never really rest. You're always constantly um, learning. But, you know, that's also the, I suppose, the most interesting part of the job because you really don't want to obviously get to that point where you don't feel like you're learning anymore. Um, so it's certainly an area where you're going to keep learning and growing. Uh, and finally, a piece of advice to law students or aspiring law students. It would be to find your people in the sense of, you know, through law school, um, it's so great to have that network of support there through your friends that you can, you know, share your class notes with or do assignments together or have study groups. Um, without those key support network of friends and family, um, I think law school would be a really daunting place and especially, you know, the clerkship process would be completely overwhelming not to have, you know, those sorts of um, people that you can talk to who can relate to the process that you're going through because it is a really stressful process. Um, and, you know, these are the people that will also continue to be your support network as you start your career as a graduate, go through to lawyer or senior associate. Um, you know, they might not all remain as lawyers, but at least, um, you know, coming from that kind of uh, background, I feel like there is a greater understanding there about your, you know, what you might be going through with work or, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis with, you know, your life or whatever. So um, just to, to, to find your people um, if you can um, and try and have people around you who can be your support network. Yeah, I think that's more important nowadays um, because the, the students who started last year, they would have done most of their schooling online. Mm. Um, and that makes it more difficult because nobody really knows um, what you're going through at home. Mm. So that definitely finding your own people and being able to have someone relate to you and also relate to your struggles. Yeah. Uh, so thank you so much for your time today, Nikki. And thank you to Asha for allowing us to film in the Sydney office for this podcast episode. <laughs>